Hey, what's up YouTube? This is We All Juggle Knives and you are at Multi-Tool Monday and this Multi-Tool is the Hanway Forge Multi-Tool also known as the Paul Chen Multitasker. Now this has been out for several years but I just heard of it recently. It's, it's not a well-known Multi-Tool but let me tell you this is a gem. This is a lot better than almost pretty much all the less expensive off-brand multi-tools that I've seen. This one, I am very glad to have picked this one up. Now this multi-tool is based around shears, all right? Unlike most multi-tools, it is not based around pliers. Now a lot of times when you have a multi-tool based around shears, it's often used for gardening. So this would be pretty good at pruning vegetation, but it is more of a multitasker. Now Hanway Forge is actually more known for making swords. I paid $22 for this multi-tool. That was a great price. Blade HQ was selling them. They are currently sold out. However, it is available on Amazon for around $30, including shipping. So I will include those Amazon links and prices are subject to change. Right on the left is the Leatherman Super Tool 300. On the far right is the Gerber Diesel, and in the middle is the Hanway Tool. So you see, this is uh, it's intermediate in length between the uh, Super Tool and the Gerber Diesel. So it's a little bit longer than four and a half inches, which is basically the largest size of multi-tool. Now this multi-tool does not come with a pouch, but it will fit in like Leatherman pouches. I have so many extra Leatherman pouches that I was fine with it having its own pouch but it'll fit in a Leatherman pouch. As for the pocket clip on this, is it useful? I mean this is a fairly large heavy multi-tool so is that practical? Well let me put it this way, I would never clip this into the front slash pocket on any of my pants. However, I would clip it into the uh, side cargo pockets. I have carried like large knives clipped into those pockets before, like as large as this. Now one thing I don't like about this is the very high polish satin finish. Uh, not only is it really highly reflective, which is bad for uh, the military guys out there, but it's also a fingerprint magnet. Now to deploy the shears one-handed, it actually has a sliding mechanism, right? You push, push down on these. And then you just go like that. So that's cool. And look at those shears. Okay, let's cut some things. First of all, are the shears sharp? Got some paracord. Yeah, I mean, it'll easily cut your cordage. All right, let's try something more difficult. All right, here it is on some cardboard. Yeah, I mean, it goes through that cardboard easily. You see that? Hold on, let me, let me double up this cardboard. So you see, you see how thick, you know, it's kind of nasty cardboard. Let me double this up. Okay, I actually folded it so that there's four layers right there. Hey, why, why screw around, right? Let's test out, let's see if it can go through four. Yeah, easily, it easily can, it easily went through, hold on, let me just show it. It can easily go through four layers. Yeah, these things have some power. That's four layers again. Yep, because, hold on. Nice. You can just get so much power because, you know, it's a long multi-tool. You can, you can apply a lot of force with these shears. Four layers of cardboard. All right, last but not least, like I said, people sometimes will use shear multi-tools for, uh, for gardening, right? Here's a, I'm using this for whittling. It's a leftover. So let's say you wanna prune some uh, vegetation. Hold on. There you go. Hold on, because the camera's right here. Nice. Yeah, so if you want to like prune your rose bushes or something like that, yeah, you can use the shears for that. This also has a portion for cutting wire. You see that part right there? That's for wire. Let's try that out. Yeah. 
And yeah, I mean, it easily goes through wire and I suspect it could do a lot thicker than this because this was easy for it. Since I don't have any thicker wire right now, I'm gonna triple this up and see if it can just cut through three strands at once. And it did very easily. All right, so I like that wire cutter. Now it also has a saw right here with a, there's a nail nick, see that? Now the saw on this is just as good quality as a Swiss Army knife saw, and maybe even a little bit better. I was out testing this today and, for example, you see this notch, right? I cut a groove there, a groove there, and then I scooped out the middle with a knife. Now look how nasty this wood is. This is dry weathered wood. And the saw was able to handle it. You know, each groove took about no more than 20 seconds, right, to go that deep. That is very good for a small saw. And notches like this are one main use of a saw of this size. And now the blade. The blade has a one-handed opening with your right hand anyway. It's got an opening uh, thumb stud. And that is the blade. It is full flat ground. All right, paper demo, is it sharp? Nice. Yeah, you see that. That's actually fairly sharp. Yeah. Not as sharp as a Spyderco, but for a multi-tool blade. I mean, they've done a decent job with this edge. Nice. Yeah, they've done a lot better job than most uh, inexpensive multi-tools. One more. Oh, that's beautiful. So yeah, a very usable edge on that blade, and it's a locking blade. It has a liner lock. There's the, uh, there's the liner right there. So they did a good job on that blade. What else does this have? This also has a metal file, and they've done a very intelligent thing with this file. Now the file is completely removable from the tool, right, to access it. There's a little nick there. And you can remove it. That is a very good idea. There's the file. That's very good that they made it so you can just take it off because now you can use it on the tool itself. Right, for example, let's say that you're a dumbass and I know that none of you have ever done this because we're all, we're all perfect. But let's say you accidentally hit this blade against something else metal. You get a little nick in the blade. Because this file can come off, you can repair a little nick in the blade. Now, when you put this file back, you want to be careful. All right? You want to make sure you want to make sure that you have it in there. Right? Because if uh if it's a little loose, it can fall off and you lose it, right? But if you put it in there, it's not going to fall out as long as you make sure it's in there uh, tightly to begin with. This multi-tool also has three screwdrivers. It's got that Phillips driver, and it's got two flathead screwdrivers, or slotted, at the ends of these openers. you got the bottle opener and a can opener. Now the blade locks, but the smaller tools do not have a hard lock, but they do have a notch which fits onto here. All right, so let me show that. You see that? All right, so they're not going to flop around. And last, mini pliers. Now I saved this for last because I wanted to give you the good news first. This is my least favorite part of the tool. All right, it's got mini pliers and, uh, you know, basically, hold on. They just deploy like that. Now as you can see, these mini pliers are pretty much very similar to Victorinox mini pliers. Right? And I have no problem with them trying to give you small pliers, but the metal on this is... It's a bit soft. It's a bit soft. Right? The pliers, they meet up. They meet up pretty well. But as I was testing this, these pliers actually bent. The only reason that the uh, they meet up well is because I bent them back. Right? I had to bend these back to kind of fix them. 
So yeah, these mini pliers, uh, they just need to make them more sturdy. I wasn't doing anything abusive with them. I had one of those utility knives where you snap off the blade to get a new blade. And all I did was snap off, the, try to snap off the blade and the pliers bent. And you know, with those type of utility knives, the blades are pre-cut so that you can snap them off relatively easily. So mini pliers should not bend just from snapping off like a pre-cut, a pre-cut like utility knife blade. Like this knife blade, for example, let's say I took, I put on a protective glove and I bent this knife blade. The blade would spring back into place on its own, right? But if I bent this, it would be like, you know, I could bend this into a U-shape. That's not good. So I like that they gave you mini pliers, but these are just not as, these are just not as high quality or as durable as the Victorinox mini pliers. Now in fairness, if you really care that much about the pliers, you probably would have bought a pliers-based multi-tool rather than the shears. So the fact that those mini pliers aren't that good, it's definitely not the end of the world because obviously you would just use a different multi-tool if you had some heavy plier tasks. All right, let's summarize the tool set. The blade is really good because it locks, it has one-handed opening, and it came sharp. It does not have a reamer or awl, and it does not have a fully serrated blade. As for the shears, those are awesome. Those are very strong, they're very durable, they came sharp, they can go through four layers of cardboard easily, you can garden with them, and you can deploy them one-handed. The saw was excellent. It was just as good as any of my Victorinox saws. Uh, the openers, fairly useful. The three screwdrivers, it could use a few more screwdrivers. The file, it's very intelligent for them to make it so you can completely remove it for the, from the tool. So all the tools on this, except for the mini pliers, all the tools on this are very good. One of the only objections to this multi-tool could simply be that you prefer one that's based around pliers. All right, that's what we call a category objection, where you have no problem with the tool within its own category, but you want to make like apples and oranges comparisons between different categories. You know, it's kind of like people who say they don't like a sword because they would prefer a pocket knife. I don't find those comparisons to be that useful. I like to compare things within their own category because if you're buying this, you've already predetermined that you need some shears, correct? Final conclusions on this Hanway multi-tool. I really like it. For the price I paid, I feel like I got a great deal. Like I said, I paid $22 for this. The current price is around $30, including shipping, which is still a great price. Let me put it this way, if this only had the shears, the saw, and the blade, it still would have been worth it. This multi-tool is kind of what I've been looking for and what a lot of my subscribers have been looking for in terms of an inexpensive multi-tool that's very usable. This is actually head and shoulders above its competition, like within the same price range. The tool just provides you with a lot of capability for a low price. All right, YouTube, so I hope you enjoyed this multi-tool Monday. Like I said, I'll include the Amazon links if you wanna pick one up. I don't know how many are available out there. It seems like an obscure tool, so apologies in advance if they sell out, but at least some people will get in on that. All right, so stay tuned for future multi-tool Mondays. This has been We All Juggle Knives and Multi-Tools. I'm out.